All right, so now let's look at some examples of divergence functions. Okay, so the simplest example is probably the Euclidean divergence. Right, um, so when we have an autonormal Cartesian coordinate system. Euclidean space. Right, we define a divergence as the following. I just half the uh, square of the Euclidean distance. between two points P and Q, it's like in this uh, Euclidean space, right? It's just one half the sum of cos C P I minus cos C Q I squared, right? Which is sort of the usual Euclidean distance and then we're taking one half of it, sorry, the square Euclidean distance. <coughs> so the matrix uh, G here is just the identity matrix. So that means that the square distance, right, is just the sum of the cos ci squared. Okay, so that's, that's all fairly straightforward, right? Uh, not very exciting. Um, so let's look at perhaps a, a more interesting example, which is the Kohlblatt Leibler divergence. Okay, so let's say we have uh, P of X and Q of X be two probability distributions. So the KL divergence of these two probability distributions <coughs> is given by the integral of P of X log P of X divided by Q of X dx. And then when the random variable X is discrete, right, when X is discrete, uh, then the integral gets replaced by a sum. <coughs> okay, all right. Let me sort of go back library divergence. Okay, yeah, all right. So anyway, when we have P and Q, it's like which are two probability distributions on some statistical manifold. It's like then this kublik leibler divergence is given by this expression here, right? And if again, it's like the random variable happens to be discrete as opposed to continuous, then this integral, it's like in the definition gets replaced by a sum. Okay, and you can check that it satisfies the properties of a divergence function. It's asymmetric in general. So satisfies sort of properties of a divergence. So <coughs> asymmetric in general.
and it's useful uh, in a bunch of circumstances in um, <coughs> sort of statistics, information geometry, or information theory, physics, etc. Okay. And then uh, we'll consider other types of uh, divergence functions. Um, and one remark is that the KL divergence is an example of what is going to be a more general class of divergence functions called uh, Bregman divergences, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, all right, so this is for probability distributions. It's like you can also look at a set of what are called positive measures. And what basically happens, or what the distinction between the set of positive measures and the set of probability distributions are, are that, uh, you know, it's like you still have the, pr the property that the probability is uh, non-negative. It's like at every point, basically. But there's no longer a um, sort of <coughs> normalization property, which is to say that the sum of the probability vector components or the integral of the probability distribution is no or sorry, the integral of the distribution is no longer uh, one, right? So if you are just looking at positive measures, um, you know, it's like the components are non-negative, um, but they don't sum up to one necessarily, okay? And of course, it's like probability distributions are embedded in the space of positive measures, right? Okay, so we can still talk about KL divergence uh, for positive measures. <clears throat> so, um, so we're going to extend this idea of the KL divergence for probability distributions uh, to positive measures. So D KL between two measures, let's call them M1 and M2, is just given by the following. So it's the sum uh, of M1I. log m1i over m2i. All right, so here we're doing uh, discrete measures, all right? So the, you know, it's like the random, space of random variables is now discrete, if you will, as opposed to continuous, right? Uh, but you'll see that this term is sort of the analog of this term, okay? But then there are some two additional terms you have to worry about, minus the sum of m1i minus the sum of m2i. Oh, sorry, plus. Okay, all right, so, so if now M1 and M2 are both uh, probability uh, sort of measures, right, then these sums will sum up to one individually and so they will cancel out and reduce to sort of the discrete version, it's like of the KL divergence, right? So when the total mass <coughs> of the two measures <coughs> M1 and M2 are one, they are probability distributions. this definition reduces to the definition of KL uh, for probability distributions, right?
Okay, so, so let's look at one more example. <coughs> so I'm going to look at an example of a divergence uh, for um, positive definite matrices. So these are some uh, examples. So D, P, and Q is equal to the trace of um, P log P minus P log Q minus P plus Q. And this is related to the von Neumann entropy of quantum mechanics. Then there's another one, uh, the P to Q, which is the trace of P Q inverse minus log of the absolute value of P Q inverse minus N, um, which is uh, due to the KL divergence. multivariate uh, Gaussian distributions. <coughs> and then there are other examples, it's like which I won't go into. All right. Um, all right. So, <coughs> so those are some possible examples of divergence functions for different classes of spaces. All right, and then the next thing which we'll talk about uh, is this idea of the Bregman divergences which are associated with certain convex functions. Uh, and again, the reason for studying Bregman divergences is because um, the KL divergence, which uh, plays an important role uh, in many applications, uh, is a special case, it's like of a Bregman divergence. All right, so let me just stop here for now. <coughs>